The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. I now hand over to the co-prosecutor uh, to present the uh, documents. You may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon to everybody. When I finished this morning, um, I had presented, uh, finished presenting uh, a June 1978 document that was issued by the <coughs> Central Committee uh, revising its uh, policy in relation to CIA, <coughs> KGB, and one agents. Uh, this revised policy um, was also communicated uh, in the May June 1978 issue of Revolutionary Flag. Uh, which is document E3-727, that's E3-727. And uh, the specific pages where uh, the same revised party line are discussed in this revolutionary flag can be found at Khmer ERN 000 Six four <clears throat> five six one through six four five six two uh, English ERN zero zero one eight five three two eight through three two nine and French zero zero five two four four five five through four five six. And I will not repeat the actual revised party line, but uh, in this revolutionary flag, which is a document that is limited to party members, there is additional information in that there is an explanation um, as to why this new line was being put forward in the pages that I just mentioned to you. And let me read that explanation as follows. Quote, our party puts forward this line in order to one, gather forces, two, attack the enemy. <clears throat> in order to be able to attack the enemy, we must gather forces so that the masses understand so that they are a force for squeezing out the enemy. Continuing on a few paragraphs below, quote, <clears throat> we put forward this line in order to gather forces. We do this second in order to quiet and calm things down to prevent the enemy from causing a stampede into his trap, end of quote. At the same time, the party made clear in this section of the revolutionary flag that for enemies who, quote, continue their activities further, then their frontier is clear and the Communist Party of Kampuchea must therefore eliminate them, end of quote. And as you will see from the other sections of the same issue of revolutionary flag that I will now read and present, the party's focus on eternal, internal enemies remained very much intact. Near the very start of this issue at Khmer, ERN page 00064556, through 64557, English 00185324, French ERN 00524451. The document states as follows. 
quote, <clears throat> what we saw most strikingly clear during the first semester of 1978 was the danger posed by enemies concealed from within. In attacking us this time, the enemies basically utilized domestic forces, namely forces in the countryside, the ministries and offices, and the army, whereas external forces were merely auxiliary. Continuing in the paragraph, uh, one paragraph further below, quote, the measures which we are putting forward are no different from previous measures, but we must sharpen our stance and attack and eliminate internal enemies ever, ever more acutely and continue further to take successive resolute measures against both our internal and external foes. We must do this because although the internal enemies utilize the monikers of being Communist Party of Campuchia cadres and cadres of the Campuchia people to overthrow the collective regime and the Communist Party of Campuchia people, they are in their true nature cadres of the Wands Campuchia Labor Party and CIA cadres doing this on behalf of this treasonous Labor Party of the WAN, so that the WAN and the CIA may return and bring back a regime of private capitalism. In a section of this revolutionary flag titled, What are the Contradictions? between our revolution and the counter-revolution, what are the forces opposing our revolution, which you will find at Khmer 00064566 through 64567, English 00185332 through 333, and French ERN 00524, 459 through 460, the party made the following statements. Quote, Immediately after liberation, the tax against us began. Who was attacking us? It was the CIA, the WAN, and the KGB. We never encountered any ordinary bourgeois or petty bourgeois elements. That is why we would like to stress that if we speak generally about capitalism, we fear that our analytical viewpoint will be unclear and our measures will be scattered and not hit on the head the target we must attack. The heads we must attack are CIA, WAN, and KGB. Since 1975, the forces that have attacked us have all have nothing other than CIA and WAN. The despicable Chakri, the despicable Chuk, the despicable Tuch, the despicable Doin, the despicable Pum, the despicable Si, the despicable Kao Mia, and the despicable Che were all CIA. The only difference among them was that some of these CIAs were more on the American side while others were more on the one side. Document after document demonstrates that they initially were together with the despicable Knoll to attack the communists." End of quote. In the section of this issue titled, The Party's Readjusted Orientation for fulfilling 1978 duties in the days to come, part one of which is titled The General Situation and the General Orientation of Revolutionary Duties in the Coming Future during 1978, which you can find at a Khmer 006457 through 77, English 0018534 and French 
have in your command line. The, uh, let me repeat the Khmer ERN, uh, which is 0064576. Through six four five seven seven, and at this uh, portion of the uh, document, um, you will find the following statement: "Quote: Both the external and domestic enemies have been much more severely defeated in this instance than in previous instances, because, on the one hand." We have attacked and smashed the aggressive one enemy coming from the outside, inflicting severe defeats on them. On the other hand, we have smashed the traitorous leading apartheid throughout the country together with their faction. Concretely, the traitorous forces in the east, northwest, and west zones, in Phnom Penh, in 103, In Krachi and in Sector 25. End of quote. And the final charging instructions of the party leaders on the enemy issue can be found in this document at Khmer pages 0006457 through 64579. English zero zero one eight five three four two through three four three, and French ERN zero zero five two four four six nine through four seventy. And in this uh, section, uh, the following uh, instructions are given. Quote: Our duty. Is therefore to attack absolutely, powerfully, and successively these CIA, WAN, and KGB agents. To attack them and attack them again, so that they are liquidated and successively liquidated again and again. Only if they are attacked in this manner will their veteran forces be completely smashed. Along with their remnant forces and their new forces, we find ourselves in a situation where we are on the offensive, have mastery, and are advancing to trample the enemy and seize successive victories, whereas the enemy is being smashed to smithereens, scattered to the winds, and liquidated. When we completely smash to smithereens and liquidate the enemy successively in this manner, it leads to the situation of our revolution in every sphere being more, becoming more and more excellent. And in the conclusions that follow below, I will read、uh, the last、uh, instruction, number D, which states as follows: "Quote." We must see as key the duty of attacking the domestic enemy, that this is related to every one of all of our other duties. Every party level must therefore adopt the role of leading the army and the people to attack all such enemies, sweep them cleanly away, sweep and sweep and sweep again and again ceaselessly. So that our party forces are pure, our leading forces at every level and in every sphere are clean at all times. End of quote. Your honors, the、uh, last method by which the party center communicated orders or instructions that I will address today is telegram sent from Office 870. Document. E3/1186. That's E3/1186. Is a report that was sent by Sector 22 of the East Zone on the 19th of March 1978, describing activities of enemies in Muk Kampul District. The report from Sector 22. 
requests that the west and central zones be informed of the situation. And there are three copies of this report within E3 slash 1186, each with a different handwritten annotation indicating to whom the copy was provided. The first uh, copy, which is Khmer page 0001920203, has a handwritten note at the top indicating that the report was sent to Office 870. In the second copy, which is Khmer 0001920204, the handwritten note at the top indicates that a copy of the report was sent to the West Zone. And in the third copy, which is at Khmer ERN 0001920205, there are handwritten CCs at the bottom indicating that copies were sent to Brother Vorn, Brother C, a reference to Chu Chet, the West Zone Secretary, and Brother Pok, a reference to K. Pak, the Central Zone Secretary. The document E3-177, that's E3-177, is the response that was sent by Office 870 to this report from Sector 22. It was sent on the 20th of March, 1978, the day after the Sector 22 report, copied to the West and Central Zone secretaries, and reads as follows, and I will quote here from the text of the telegram, quote, be informed that the East Zone has sent a copy of report on the enemy's activities in Muk Kampul to the office by requesting the office to send to you, brother. Brother, please monitor this situation and take any measure based on the reality by communicating with Muk Kampul. With warmest revolutionary fraternity, dated 20th of March, 1970, 1978, M870. And, Your Honors, it is noteworthy that this telegram from 870 uh, is telegram number 32, uh, confirming that telegrams were regularly sent out by the center office. Your Honors, there are um, many more important issues of revolutionary flag that are before this chamber um, that time does not permit us to discuss today. Uh, I do, however, wish to draw the attention of the chamber uh, to two uh, color copies uh, that were uh, fairly recently obtained by the chamber since the start of the trial. Uh, I believe either from Professor Kiernan or from, from Professor Heder in response to an inquiry that was made. Uh, document E169 slash 4 slash 1.1.1. Let me read that again. E169 slash 4 slash 1.1.1 is a a uh, color copy of the July 1975 Revolutionary Youth publication uh, that was obtained by the trial chamber. Um, a previous version of this issue uh, had been put before the chamber by our office as E3-724. The chamber may recall that that, uh, that document was a English summary of the revolutionary flag that had been prepared by either uh, Professor Kiernan or Professor Heder based on the document, which was subsequently the original Revolutionary Youth, which was subsequently obtained by the Chamber. Uh, similarly, E169-4-1.1.2 is a color copy of the December 1975 to January 1976 Revolutionary Flag publication, uh, and again, a previous version of this issue had been put before the chamber by us um, as E3-731. 
Um, if it has not already been done, uh, the new color copies of these issues of Revolutionary Flag and, and Revolutionary Youth uh, should be put before the Chamber and given E3 numbers uh, or alternatively they, they could be uh, included as part of the E3 numbers of the previous versions uh, that were submitted by in our uh, submitted by the co-prosecutors. I would like to just take a moment though to show uh, first of all the cover page of the July 1975 Revolutionary Youth um, to show that on the screen. It, it is worthwhile to take a look at these color uh, photocopies of the original Revolutionary Flag and Youth booklets. You can see the bright blood red color that was used for the flags on the cover page. You can even see the staples uh, uh, from the original booklets in this photograph, um, something uh, that will be of use, I hope, to my colleagues across the aisle on the Noon Chea team. And I will end today by reading a excerpt, a short excerpt uh, that I found uh, in this July 1975 Revolutionary Youth. Uh, this is one of the earliest publications of Revolutionary Youth or Revolutionary Flag that we have following April 1975. And at uh, Khmer page 00809798 through 809799 uh, of this July 1975 issue of Revolutionary Youth. Uh, English 00815 132 through 815133 and French 00815911 through uh, 912. There is a discussion of uh, events uh, after the liberation of Phnom Penh, uh, which I will read a couple of excerpts for you. Quote. Shortly after Phnom Penh City and the whole country had been liberated, our revolutionary male, female youths and cadres took control of the city. So we moved to live in the feudalist capitalist environment in which plenty and variety of modern materials, which we had never had and known in the past, were available. Continuing down later in the following paragraph, quote, some cadres were attracted by materials, so they went around collecting radios, watches, pens, and cameras. But they left the important booties, which were the strategic things, such as artillery, small arms, handguns, rifles, and ammunition, and many important machinery haphazardly left all over the place. No one cared to look at and collect them to keep in a proper place. As for some female combatants, they even put on the enemy dresses, sprayed perfume, applied powder and lipstick, and posed in front of the mirror inside the room. They completely forgot about the revolutionary vigilance view and stance. They completely forgot about the party's task given to them to defend and clean up the city, meaning to clean up the mud and sewage, the garbage, as well as the bad influence and the ideology of the enemy. In the situation when they became overjoyed and flashy in mass, losing control and forgetting about the revolutionary stance, if the party had taken no measures to evacuate all the people out of Phnom Penh and other provincial towns, the enemy might have attacked and pounced on us from behind and smashed our revolutionary forces to pieces. Or at least the enemy would have been able to burrow inside our revolutionary stance, 
cause chaos in the revolutionary ranks, break up the party's discipline and solidarity, making the revolutionary stance fade away. And then the enemy could have smashed us in any day to dissolve our historic great victory of 17 April. End of quote. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honours, for the time to present these documents, and uh, I would now like to turn it over to my colleague who will address uh, documents related to the government structure and ministries. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. President, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your honors. Good uh, afternoon to all parties and to the people uh, in uh, the public gallery. So now I'm going to turn to another topic, uh, which is uh, the topic of the government and the different ministries that composed uh, this government. Uh, we're going to speak about the, how these ministries were organized, how they operated, and uh, about their communication. Before we turn to specific documents regarding several ministries, I would like, first of all, to present uh, documents that relate to the government in its globality. First of all, the, the Grunk government and then the government of uh, Democratic Kampuchea. So in order to understand well uh, how the government developed, uh, from the Grunk and then uh, to the government of Democratic Kampuchea between 17 April 1975 and 7 January 1979, I would like first, uh, in the first five to ten minutes, return to return briefly to three documents uh, that describe the situation of the government during the period that preceded immediately 17 April 1975, and this so you may understand well the succession of events. The first uh, document uh, is document E3-28, which is dated 19 January 1973, and which is called uh, the, uh, United, the Seat of Cambodia in the United Nations. And I will only quote one single passage, which is at the end of the document, uh, in an annex, uh, uh, which uh, describes uh, the composition of the Grunk at the time. And I quote, uh, free translation, the royal government of National Unity of Cambodia, Grunk, uh, under the aegis of uh, the Funk, was made up, was constituted on 5 May 1970. It is the only legitimate and legal government of Cambodia. Its current composition is the following. End of quote. So this is uh, how it was composed on 19 January 1973. And I will only mention a few names to be brief. And Mr. Pennut first, uh, Prime Minister. Mr. Kyo Sampan, Deputy Prime Minister and Ministry of National Defense. Uh, Mr. Sarin Chak, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Mr. Hu Niem, Minister of Information and of Propaganda. And you will see in the list of names uh, in this document that uh, other uh, figures are part of this government, such as Chan Yoran, General Dun Sam Ol, Hut Sambat, Chisan, Chun Prasit, Ket Chun, Van Pini, Tif Ol, but also Yeng Tirit, who is the Deputy uh, Ministry of Popular Education and of Youth, Chuchet, Deputy Minister of Public Health, of Religious and Social Affairs, and Koi Tun, Deputy Minister of Economy and Finance. The, document suivant les deux the following document is E3-1399. Let me repeat E3-1399, and it is dated the 27th of January 1975. And it is titled, Cabinet of the Grunk, Declaration by Sianuk, dated the 5th of October 1974. This document includes a number of uh, communiques of the Grunk 
which were published in uh, an FBIS publication. And we learned that with relation to January 1973, some of the people concerned were, minister, were vice minister on all ministers, including Chuchet Ing Thirith and Khoi Thun, in the meantime, had become Minister of National Economy and Finance, whereas he was previously Vice Minister. The third document, prior to the 17th of April 1975, is an FBIS document dated 16th of January 1975. In our table and in our annexes is in 9 slash 31, and this is a new document. Let me give the Kume ERN 0081259 up to 0081265. And in English, the ERN is 00. 166706 up to 08. There is no French translation available. There are only two excerpts that I would like to read out. The first article in this Phoebe's document titled in English, since there is no French version, this the title is Sianux. 15th of November 1974, decree relieving Gronk ministers. And in the English, it is 00166706. And in Khmer, it is 00881125922261. Let me quote what is stated therein, uh, and this time around, it will be in English. I crave your indulgence for moving from one language to the other. Let me quote. Tree number 100, Article 1. Are relieved at their request of their ministerial functions, Go Hu, Hut Sambat, Chi San, Chan Yuran, Chun Mum, Duong Sam Ol, Cho Seng Ki Chun, E Chun Prasit. Fin de citation. End of quote. A second article in the same document is titled Sianuk Names New Grand Ministers. I will quote this article in English as well. And it is on page 00166707. And in Khmer, it is 00881263. So let me quote in English then. Decree number 101, Article 1. As of the day of their effective accession to their posts, are appointed Minister of Justice and Judicial Reforms, His Highness Norodom Purisara, Minister of Public Health, Chun Chun, Minister of Public Works, Telecommunications and Reconstruction, Toch Pun, Minister of Religious and Social Affairs, Chu Chet, Minister of Popular Education and Youth, Yang Tirit, Yang Tirit, and Minister of National Economy and Finances, Khoi Thun. Fin de citation. End of quote. End of quote. Let me now talk about the official composition of the Gronk government. After the victory of the 17th of April 1975, I'll also talk about some appointments made in the CPK at the same time regarding the decree of the 
15th of November 1974, the official composition of the Grunk is said to have been modified after the 17th of April 1975. However, there is a document which has the following ERN number, E3-1256, dated the 14th of August 1975. Let me point out that it is a communique of the Grunk Mission in France. And this is what we find on the Khmer page, ERNS 00630985. And in French, it is on page two, ERN S quadruple zero four six zero four in English zero zero two eight zero six ten. Let me quote Press release The Grunk mission in France is authorized to provide the following details concerning new appointments within the Royal Government of National Union of Cambodia which were made on the 12th of August. So it is the 12th of August, 1975. Mr. Ying Siri was appointed Deputy Prime Minister in charge of foreign affairs under the presidency of the Council of Ministers. Mr. Son Sen was appointed Deputy Prime Minister in charge of national defense under the presidency of the Council of Ministers. And further down, all the other Grunk ministers shall maintain their duties. I will now like us to look at another document dated 1975. It is the Standing Committee of 9th of October 1975, document E3-182. This document was quoted this morning by my a learned colleague, but I will simply quote another section of the same document, and it's the same, the same minutes of the standing committee. Uh, all the documents I have quoted are Grunk documents, but this one is a document of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Point number one, under the title the delegation of work and operational process. We see the duties and responsibilities on the democratic Kampuchea. In Khmer, this document is uh, uh, ERN 00019108, and in English, it's 0018339 93 up to 94, and in French, it is 00292868269. Just it. Let me quote. One, Comrade Secretary, general responsibility over the military and the economy, Comrade Deputy Secretary. Party Affairs, Social Action, Culture, Propaganda, and Education. Three, Comrade Van, Foreign Affairs, Work, Both Party and State. Four, Comrade Hem, Responsible for the Front and the Royal Government and Commerce for Accounting and Pricing. Five, Comrade Took. Let me spell it T H U C H. Domestic and international commerce. Six, Comrade Q, responsible for general staff and security. Seven, Comrade Vaughan, industry, railroads, and fisheries. Eight, Comrade Dern, chairman of political affairs, bureau or office 879. Comrade Fear, responsible for culture, social action, and foreign affairs. Ten, 
Comrade Art, Propaganda and Re-Education, both Internal and External, 11 Comrade Che, spelled C-H-E-Y, Agriculture, 12 Comrade Yem, Office 870, and lastly, Comrade Pang, Government Office. As we saw previously, only five of these leaders on the list within the CPK occupied ministerial portfolios within the Grunk. They were namely Wang, that is Yang Sari, Hem, Kyo Sampan, Kyo, Son Sen. All three were vice prime ministers of the Grunk. In addition to that, we had Tuk. T-H-U-C-H, that is Koi Tuon, who was Minister of Economy and fin Finance, and Kia Yang Chirit, Minister of Popular Education and Youth. Now, let us look at the next document, the resignation of Sianuk and the organization of the elections of the 20th of March, 1976, uh, occasioned a complete change in the composition of the government. And we see the emergence of uh, leaders of uh, the PCK or CPK becoming government officials alone. I will quote another document, and it is E3-197. And it is minutes of the Standing Committee of the Front of the 11th of March, 1976. And you would recall that this record talks of the position of the party vis-a-vis -vis Sianuk and the general feudalism. This meeting was attended by the uh, secretary, the deputy secretary of the party, Comrade Von, Kiel, Hem, Dun, Tum, T-U-M, and Tuch, T-O-U-C-H. I would simply like to read an excerpt of this document, and it is in uh, uh, five zeros, five, four, five in English, it's zero, zero, one, eight, two, six, three, nine. And in French, it is Pages 1 and 2, ERN 00, 3349612262. And in this document, mention is being made of the positive effects of Sianuk's resignation on behalf of the revolution. And let me quote 2A Good factors for our revolution. For one thing, the entire Kampuchean people have signed for their last time all our cards, all the army at same. The people of the world have no problem either. Third point on the 2A. Third, our foreign affairs work will be better than before since we do it ourselves because there is no Sianuk. We are clear cut. Further down in the same document, in Khmer, it is on K page 5054725485, and in English it is 001826, quadruple 0 to 41, and in French it is on page 3, ERN 00334963. Under Title 3, Opinions of Ankar meeting of the evening of the 13th, obviously the 13th of March. This is what is stated therein, and I quote, the super com comrade secretary has pointed out that this problem, that is the resignation of Sianuk, is primordial. Allow ANCA of the Central Committee to decide, and then they pro propose a number of initiatives, which I've already been referred to this morning, but there's one initiative that was not mentioned this morning, and it is initiative number two, and I quote, 
we must convene the Cabinet of Ministers, report to the Cabinet of Ministers to decide, then go meet with Sihanouk again, with Penuth participating. If he accepted to be recorded, it would be better. In this document, we can see that the will of the Standing Committee was, first of all, that the Central Committee of the CPK should take a decision regarding the resignation of Sihanouk, and secondly, that the Council of Ministers of the Gronko and its Prime Minister, Pen Nuth, would endorse Sihanouk's resignation. And this is what we are going to see shortly when we talk about document E3-12, which is the decision of the Central Committee on a number of problems, and it is dated the 30th of March, 1976. We talked about it this morning, but I will quote another passage in the same decision. This passage confirms the decision of the Standing Committee regarding Sihanouk's resignation and the sidelining of Penuth. The first pertinent passage is in the Khmer, uh, page 000031-40, up to 41. And in English, it is 0018-2813. And in French, it is 0022-4366. Under point 12 of the document titled uh, Organization of State Organs. And let me quote this decision of the Central Committee. In reality, our state organs are different from those that existed before. Previously, it was a front, now it is not the case. They are now state organizations in their entirety. All these state organizations should be truly representative and should be influential enough, both within the party and in the country, as well as abroad. This is a political offensive as well. Penuth has no problems with that. Sianuk's situation is mature already. He is out of wind, cannot move further. Therefore, we have decided to have him retire in accordance with his request." End of quote. This is a document of the Central Committee, and you would have noted that here we are no longer talking of the resignation of Sianuk before the Standing Committee, but his retirement. Second relevant document, same document E3-12, still on the point number 12. In Khmer, it is on ERN quotable 0-3141242, and in English, it is 0 the President, uh, could you please repeat uh, the ER numbers again and this time be slower? Absolutely, Mr. President, I crave your indulgence. In Khmer, the, this passage is in the following ERN 0000314142. And in English, it is 0018-2814. And in French, it is on pages 4 and 5 at 0022436627. In this passage, after setting out the composition of the Standing Committee of the National Assembly, chaired by Nguyen Chia, and also the State Presidium, chaired by Comrade Hem, that is Kyo Sampan. The document reads as follows, and I quote, The government, 
must be totally an organization of the party. It must represent our state. It must be strong. It must be influential in the party, in the country, and outside the country with friendly countries and with enemies. The matter of setting up the government has been discussed again and again since May, time after time. Comrade Paul, Prime Minister, or First Minister, or rather Prime Minister, Comrade Van, Deputy Prime Minister for Foreign Affairs, Comrade Vaughan, Deputy Prime Minister for Economy and Finance, Comrade Kiel, Deputy Prime Minister for National Defense. And further down, measures for resolution. One, the work of the government, all, it must be under all the three prime ministers. The deputy prime ministers must be strong, strong individually, strong in the machinery of their work. Now, after considering the issue of the request for Sianuk's resignation and the complete reshuffling of the government, after the meeting of the Standing Committee of the 11th of March 1976 and the Central Committee meeting on the 30th of March 1976. It was the turn of the Council of Ministers of the Grung to meet on the 4th of April 1976, as announced by the Standing Committee previously. And it is document E3 slash 1 slash 7.1, and it is titled Declaration of the Government of Democratic Kampuchea regarding the declaration of Samdek Norodom Sihanouk requesting his retirement. And in Kume, it is 00806211. And I believe that in all the languages, it is on the first page because it is a one-page document. This is what is stated therein by the Gronk government. The name has changed, but the composition hasn't changed. Let me quote after reading Head of State Samdek Norodom Sianuk's statement dated the 1st of April 1976. Request, requesting his retirement. The Council of Ministers met on the 4th of April 1976 with Samdek Prime Minister Penuth presiding to discuss the matter further. End of quote. And this is how the declaration proceeds further down after outlining the services of Sianuk. The Council of Ministers had decided to grant this request, and at the same time, the Council of Ministers had decided to propose to the Assembly represent and the representatives of the people the following, to grant Norodom Sianuk the title of leading patriotic figure, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, there has been a progressive movement from the, the decision of the Standing Committee regarding the resignation of Sianuk to a decision of the Central Committee, and this time around, a declaration by the government of Democratic Kampuchea. And the logical conclusion is that the Kampuchea People's Representative Assembly has to consider the problem, and he does this in document E3-165. And this document is on the first Congress of the Kampuchea People's Representative Assembly, dated 11th and, or rather, 11th to the 14th of April, 1976. There is a second document, which is almost identic identical, one E3 slash 161 of the 14th of November 1976. It repeats the, the, the press release, the contents of the press release signed by Nguyen Chia. 
In the wake of the decision of the Central Committee decision of the 30th of March 1976, as well as the government's declaration, this document of the 14th of uh, April 1976 confirms the appointment of Noon Chia as president of the People's Democratic of the Kampuchea People's Representative Assembly. Furthermore, the Assembly endorses in its entirety Norodom Sihanouk's request to be retired according to the proposals made in the 4th April 1976 government communique, which I read a while ago. In the same document, the Assembly appoints Kyo Sampan as uh, Chairman of the State Presidium of Democratic Kampuchea. The document mentions under point four the draft resolutions, the consideration and the approval of the resignation of the former, former government, and in Khmer it is on page 0005363. And in English, it is 0018406768. And in French, it is on page 21, ERN 0030-1354. And this is what is stated therein, that is in the passage, and I quote, the assembly has noted that the government of Democratic Kampuchea, which was called previously the Gronk, uh, w w was created on the 5th of May 1978. And I'll skip a short passage. So th this government of Democratic Kampuchea, which was previously the Gronk, was created on the 5th of May 1978, has completed its mission completely with many advantages and requested his resignation on the 6th of April 1976. The Assembly has approved in its entirety the resignation of the former government. When we talk of the resignation of the former government, we are talking of the appointment of a new government, and it is what we see in the same document under point number six. So we are still talking of document E3-165. Under point number six, titled The Appointment of a New Government of Democratic Kampuchea on page 0005365, that is in Khmer, and in French it is page 22, ERN 00301355, and in English 0018, Quartable zero six eight two six nine. Donc je cite. So I'm going to quote uh, this uh, passage relating to the new government. Uh, following uh, a, a careful discussion and detailed discussion of their various qualities in every aspect, the Assembly approves the selection and appointment of the new government of Democratic Kampuchea with the following composition: Comrade Pol Pot, Prime Minister. Two, Comrade Yeng Sari, Deputy Prime Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs. Three, Comrade Von Vett, Deputy Prime Minister responsible for Economics. Four, Comrade Son Sen, Deputy Prime Minister responsible for National Defense. Five, Comrade Hu Nim, Minister responsible for Information and Propaganda. Six, Comrade Chun Chun, Ministry, uh, Minister of Public Health. Seven, Ying Tirit, Ministry of Social Action, 8. Toch Pun, Ministry of Public Works. And finally, Yunyat, Ministry of Culture, Training, and Education. Uh, in uh, the context of the government, in the framework of the government, I continue with the quote The committees assigned of the Office of the Deputy Prime Minister for Economics are. One, Committee for Agriculture. Two, Committee for Industry. Three, Committee for Commerce. Four, Committee for Communications. Five, Committee for Energy. Six, Committee for Rubber Plantations. 
the president of each committee uh, is equivalent to, to minister uh, in the government of uh, Democratic Kampuchea. So you will have noticed that uh, the document from the People's uh, Assembly did not uh, designate a secretary and a president with the rank of minister, and we will see later, right away why. Second of all, you also noticed that Pen Nut is no longer prime minister, and he has been officially replaced by Pol Pot. And we also notice the absence of Koi Tuan among the list of ministers. And we understand why the People's Assembly was not able to nominate uh, the secretaries of the committees that I just uh, mentioned. When we read the following document, which is E3-235, and which also is indexed as E3-236, uh, this document is called Summary of the Decision of the Standing Committee of the meeting of 19, 20, and 21, April 1976. And at the beginning, uh, the document states the following. At the Khmer page, 0, 0, 1, 9, 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 3. English, 0, 0. One eight three four one six to one seven and French ERN zero zero three two two nine six eight to six nine and I will quote after three days of discussion of matters recorded in the agenda the standing committee has made the following decisions. One, preparations to organize various committees surrounding Office 870. And here, the document mentions 11 committees, not six committees. And I'm only going to mention a few of these. And we can see it displayed in Khmer on the screen. First committee, Commerce Committee, with uh, Comrade Ritt as member, as well as Comrade Nem and Comrade Chun. And we will provide details on these names later, and I'm also going to mention other committees, for example, Land Transport uh, Committee under Han's direction, and Maritime Transport led by Man, the Phnom Penh uh, storage houses with Run as secretary, the Ports Committee led by Krin, and the Agriculture Committee led by Che, and there are other committees. And the second excerpt of this document, E3-235, in Khmer, it's on page 0001946247. In English, 0018-3420. And French, 0032. Two nine seven one, and here, in at point four in Roman numerals, commerce and industry issues are, are mentioned, and in the first paragraph, it is the Korean delegation is mentioned, and this is what uh, this document states: organize a committee to go negotiate with. The others, Super Comrade Vaughan, Comrade On, O R N in French, Comrade Che, C H E Y, and Super Comrade Chun, C H H O E U N. And the second point regarding technical advice. Super Comrade Van, and we can suppose that this is Yang Sari, Super Comrade Hem, Kyusampan, and Super Comrade Tuch, T O U C H.
So before I turn to the meetings that were held monthly uh, at the Council of Ministers, before the break, I would like to mention a last document. This is a, a simplification document from the Ministry of Education of Democratic Kampuchi that uh, is dated uh, from 1977. This document is indexed at D366-7. Point one point six three, and I'll repeat D three six six slash seven point one point six three. There is no E three number for the moment, so this document is entitled Political Geography of Democratic Kampuchea. And this document explains uh, uh, through what is titled as Lesson 2, what the state institutions are, and in particular, Point 4, which is titled Government, and I quote the free translation, the government is the executive organ of the laws and of the political lines defined by the People's Assembly of Democratic Kampuchea, before which it is entirely responsible for all of its acts. End of quote. This responsibility that the government uh, says that it takes on fully as of April 1976 can, is also mentioned during the first Council of Ministries of Democratic Kampuchea, which I will present uh, after the break with your leave. President, thank you. It is now appropriate moment for the adjournment. The chamber will adjourn until f uh, three o'clock. Some change,